Over the weekend, we had some 912ers protesting. I guess these are the remnants of the teabaggers. And they were out in Washington, March on Washington, organized by Freedom Works, led by former House Majority Leader Dick Armey. In other words, completely organized by industry to <laughs> trick these poor dopes into going and spending their own money, by the way, to go all the way to Washington to demand that they have higher insurance premiums. Let's go to the pictures from the events, because this is great stuff. All right, uh, I'll, I'll describe all of these for you, uh, for the people at home that are uh, podcasting. So, of course, uh, we have a picture of Nancy Pelosi saying Nazis. Uh, AstroTurf, they ask. I, I don't know if they're calling her a Nazi. I presume so. I've seen other pictures where they do. Uh, I don't know if they have her calling them Nazis. I don't, the whole thing's weird to me. But here's what I love about this picture. The sign in the right corner that says, uh, trading uh, freedom for security, uh, you will, uh, you know, I don't have my glasses on. You will have neither. You will have neither. Okay. That's awesome. This is when you brought that sign out? Okay. When Bush was taking away our Fourth Amendment rights and saying that he could spy on all Americans, you didn't bring that sign out? But when we're trying to get more affordable health care insurance, all of a sudden we're taking away freedom for security and we're going to have neither? I mean, these people, just they don't know anything. They don't know any of the issues. They don't know a thing about policy or the Constitution. They just come out there and yell and scream. All right, let's keep it going. All right, uh, of course, that's Obama uh, with a Hitler mustache. That's always classy. Uh, bury Obamacare with Kennedy. Very classy. Uh, and there's a picture of uh, one Obama on the lower uh, right-hand side kissing the hand of a Saudi prince. Now, again, very ironic given how Bush literally kissed the Saudi prince and held hands and walked around his Crawford ranch with him. And then uh, another one saying to uh, what appeared to be Arab Muslim terrorists, Obama saying, whoa, boys, I'll take it from here. <laughs> because, of course, Obama's a terrorist, and he hangs out with uh, Muslims. Jesus, I, I didn't see this coming. It's very surprising. Uh, then this guy wants to bring both of them in. He says, impeach the Muslim Marxist. So he's a Muslim and a Marxist. Nicely done. These are all class acts, by the way. I and mean, these are not isolated pictures. It's just dozens of these pictures with dozens of these signs. We we'll keep it rolling. Now, you're saying, what is that? Well, that's horse poo, right? And what they did was they put a picture of Obama underneath the horse poo because they just want to continue their classy ways here. And they see that was very, very clever. You see Obama under dog, uh, not even dog, horse poo. Ha <laughs> ha, they got him. All right, let's keep it going. Uh, Nazi Pelosi, uh, you can keep the fascism, I'll keep my freedom. Nazi Pelosi, get it? Very clever. And she also has a Hitler mustache. Oust the Marxist usurper, his czars, and thugs. Honduras did it. I love this sign. Because, do you understand what they're doing? They're advocating a coup like we're a third world country like Honduras. Like they literally want to turn us into a banana republic. Honduras did it, why can't we, is the idea here. And by the way, you know who came up with the czars? Ronald frickin' Reagan with his White House drug czar. Let alone how many, uh, you know, George H.W. Bush put into place, George W. Bush put into place. All of a sudden, they're against the quote-unquote czars and thugs. All right. <laughs> and God, there's such great irony in all of this. Because they're against thugs while they're advocating a bloody coup. <laughs> it's unbelievable. All right, let's keep it going. Uh, Obama, more czars than the USSR. Of course, 1,600 Marxist way. You sense a theme here? I sense it. All right, let's keep it going. James Clyburn, of course, is a racist, he's a congressman, uh, and since he's black, he obviously has to be racist for something or other, uh, because I understand all, all the races in the country are now black. I didn't know that, but I learned from these uh, protesters. Now, here's the scary part of this sign. Now, look, nice people forced to protest. This must be serious. We came unarmed this time. See, now they go from being ridiculous to being scary. We came unarmed this time. And I like how they refer to themselves as nice people, 
uh, but then they threaten you with weapons later in the sign. All right, go ahead. Uh, and a lot of the goofballs came dressed in these colonial outfits because, like the Tea uh, Party protests, and they, were, oh God, I mean, they're 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 a circus. That's what they are. They're a bunch of like walking clowns. Here's another what appears to be a fairly lovely lady holding a sign, "Where's my gun?" Okay, in case the violent undertones were not clear enough for you. Um, of course, government is the problem. Let's keep it going. God bless Glenn Beck. God bless Glenn Beck and USA. Gee, I wonder who spurred this on. I can't quite tell. Here is my favorite sign. This is the best sign in the world. Pollutions are like dippers. They need to be changed often and then something else behind there. Again, not good without the glasses, but I love this. Pol pollutions are like dippers. Max Blumenthal interviewed this guy, and he said, do you think there should be English only taught in the schools? And he said, damn right. Yeah, it should only be English only. Where did you learn English? How, how, how do you make a sign like that? How do you not throw it away after the first guy points out that you misspelled politicians and diapers? How do you think the diapers is spelled D-I-P-E-R-S? You're unbelievable. These people are proud of their stupidity. All right, keep it going. Obama carrying a hearse. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> shocking. Keep it going. Cap Congress and trade Obama back to Kenya. Gee, any racial undertones here? No, probably not. And what is Cap Congress? Another, you know, could be interpreted as a sign towards violence. I'm sure they'll say no way, and I'll bring my gun next time. Uh, Obama for president of Kenya. I can't tell where they're going with this. Probably has nothing to do with race, though. Uh, Mugabe and Pelosi uh, is this sign. Uh, now, that might be a reference to inflation. I'll be kind there <laughs> and say maybe that's not just a racial reference. Uh, and again, here's another sign that says we came unarmed this time. Uh, these are direct, overt threats. So next time you're going to come with guns, and then what are we going to do? All right. Let me see this one. Thank you, Fox News, for keeping us informed. And, of course, informed is misspelled. God, I love how stupid these people are. They are just incredibly and pathetically stupid. Oh, it's great. Any more, Dave? No? All right. Now I found my glasses. All right. Now, uh, we're going to find out where they got this idea. So, um, could it be Glenn Beck? No, probably not. Let, let's go to uh, clip number five, guys, first, before we go to Max's clip. Uh, and see where these guys might have come up with their ideas on this protest. Here, this is a guy from the pro uh, these protests over the weekend. Let's watch. Barak was the name of the horse that Mohammed rode to heaven. All right, with a white horse. Yep. Okay. <laughs> what does the white baby represent? White America. Because I do believe that our president is a racist. This president, I think, has exposed himself as a guy over and over and over again who has a deep-seated hatred for white people or the white culture. I don't know what it is. That's the truth. That's what I believe. What do you think that he's done that, that makes him racist? Because the thing he did, it, he attended church. You, you can't sit in a pew with Jeremiah Wright. Where racism was continually pre preached. For 20 years. For 20 years and not hear some of that stuff. And he says that he didn't hear it. And not have it wash over. I cannot believe this. Well, what's the future of white America with Obama as the president? Oppression. What kind of oppression? Slavery? If he could accomplish it, I would think he would. But I think it's mo mainly communism that he's going to want to tell us what to wear, what to do, have his little red, red book like Mao, because he really is a communist. Do you think it would be better if we had a Republican president? Well, it wouldn't be worse. Barack was the name of... All right. So I was quoted in the New York Daily News also over the weekend uh, talking about Glenn Beck. And, you know, you can see it's clear as day that he's instigating these guys. And if he just instigated them to protest uh, for whatever reason, even if we completely disagree with it, 
just not only is there nothing wrong with that, that's totally fine. That's America. That's, that's just positive, right? Now, the problem is the message that he's pushing along with it. Obama's a Nazi, and you see all the signs that are saying he's a Nazi. He's a Marxist, and then they have all the signs saying he's a Marxist. And then, hey, everybody get your guns because Obama might take your guns away. Now you see we're getting a little dangerous here. And then they keep with the signs that say we came on arm this time. Cap Congress. Honduras did it, meaning we can do it. And then at that point, Beck says, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, I said grab your guns and Obama might take all your freedom away. And he might turn this country into Germany, you know, when the Nazis were in charge of the Marxists, etc., and enslave you all. But me suggest violence? No, 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 no. And what I told the New York Daily News and what I've told you guys before is, look, it, he doesn't need to incite everybody that watches him to do something stupid or violent. He just needs one. He just needs one person to do something incredibly stupid and violent. And then he'll turn around and go, oh, me? Suggest these things? No, no, not at all. And as you just saw with that clip, how impressionable is this audience? How much do they parrot exactly what he says? And look, you, you got, in some ways, you got to give him credit. He's the one that did this whole 912 stuff. And I give him credit for having 60, 70,000 people show up. I give him credit for, you know, participating in democracy. But when they cross the line into possible violence, they go from being excited participants in democracy or even goofy guys with misspelled signs and that look like lunatics, if you ask me. But that's all fine and good. It's America. But they cross the line when they insinuate violence. Well, the parts that scared me were when people were saying that Osama uh, is not you know, as bad as Obama, right? And they were saying that Obama's worse than Al-Qaeda and he's worse than the Nazis. And the word that they kept using is enemy within. Now, if someone is more dangerous than Al-Qaeda, what do you do? If someone is more dangerous to this country than Nazis, what do you do? If they're the enemy within, what do you do? See, that is the clear, clear inference of this fear-mongering driven by Glenn Beck. And that is a very dangerous concept. And he's got it buried in those guys' heads. There's nothing you could tell them now that would convince them otherwise. They think, no, Obama is the enemy within. And somebody's got to do something about it. And that's what scares the living daylights out of me. I hate to you know, keep on emphasizing it, but somebody's got to point this out and put an end to this madness. But that no one seems like they're willing to step up at all and even address the topic. Um, now, the only upside of all this is that it, you, we go back to the Ben Manquist theory. When he told me when I was a Republican, he would point to the Tom DeLays and the Trent Lots and the Jesse Helms and the list goes on and on and would say, do you really want to be in the same room as those guys, right? Well, now I think there are a lot of people in the country that watch these TV reports and think, am I in the same room as these guys? Am I voting for the same people as these guys are? And you've got to be thinking, because I think even to, certainly to independents and moderates, but I think even to some Republicans, these guys look like complete jackasses. They look like lunatics. And I think that associating the Republican Party with these guys in the long term has to do some significant damage to the Republican Party. And then I'll cap it off with one final quote for you guys. A woman at the event said, uh, we are losing our country. We think the Muslims are moving in and taking over. And this is a perfect example of the media whitewash. NBC News had this. They replaced it later with a quote saying, I'm scared to death for my country. I believe Obama's running this country into the ground. They replaced it with a less offensive quote. Why? I don't know if it's PC. I don't know if they want to uh, protect Muslims or they want to protect this woman from looking ridiculous. They, wanna, they don't want to make Republicans look bad. They don't want to make these protesters look bad. But trust us with the actual truth. If the woman said, we got to protect the country from Muslims, leave it in the tape. Can't get enough of the Young Turks? Well, then subscribe to the TYT's YouTube channel. What's the matter with you?